oh God, in which you exist. Oh Lord, it just blows our mind. Walk, oh, wonderful God, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Savior and King. We bless you in this place. Oh Lord, we want you to have your way here tonight. We pray, God, that the river of the Lord will flow freely in this house. Oh God, don't let there be any kind of encumbrances to the flow of your spirit, oh Lord. Oh Father, we keep saying it because we want to see it that out of our bellies would flow rivers of living water. And so we thank you for the overflow of your spirit. Thank you, oh God, that you keep pouring out. You keep pouring out. You keep pouring out, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, and even as the psalmist said, we've been praying and we've been sowing. Now we're asking you for the rain, Lord. We pray that you would let the rain of your spirit so permeate this house. Oh God, let it so dominate this space, this time, Father, in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Most High God, that this time, oh God, would be, be filled with the oil of the Lord, the oil of gladness, the oil of joy in this place. God, as we bless you, oh Father, as we, oh God, surrender our all to you and submit to your mighty hand, to your doing, to your bidding, to your leading, to your guiding, Lord. We want you to order our steps and orchestrate this time as we commit it to you, Father. Make it all that you want it to be. Father, we set aside any agenda that we have, and we pray that you would make this time all that you want this time to be. Lord, we want it to be a delight, and we want to be a delight unto you. Yes, we do, God. We want you to be pleasing, oh, Lord, with our coming, pleasing with our praise, pleased with our worship, Lord. And we know, God, that without faith we can't please you. So we pray, God, that whatever we do tonight, we do it as an act of faith, Lord, as an act of faith, God. When our hands go up, let us do it in faith. When we clap, oh, God, and shout unto you with a voice of triumph, we pray, God, that it's an act of faith. When we pull on the anointing, when we believe in your word, when we rest in your promises, God, let it be an act of faith. Oh, God, even as we believe you tonight, that you will confirm your word with signs and wonders following. We thank you for holy attestation tonight. We thank you, God, that you approve yourself to be Lord of all, that you approve yourself to be the mighty God, to be El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, to be El Elyon, the most high God. Lord, we ask you to prove yourself to every doubter, God, until doubt goes away, until disbelief is no more, until fear, God, is broken, until anxiety and worry doesn't have a place, oh God, among your people. But we pray let God arise here and let all of his enemies be scattered. Let God arise in our midst. Oh God, do battle on our behalf. Do warfare on our behalf. We pray for the angels of the Lord. God, that they will ascend and descend in this place. Let it be a heavenly gathering. Let it be a holy coming together, Lord. God, we need you tonight. Oh, God, we need you tonight. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need your hand on us. We need your power emanating through us. Let your love, oh, God, be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit tonight. Oh, God, for your glory and for your praise, Lord. Let it all be for your glory. Let it all be for your praise. Let it all be for your glory, God. Let it all be for your praise in this place, Lord. We want you to get the glory. Get the glory, God. Get the glory. Let no flesh glory in your sight. Oh, God, let it be about your name being exalted. Let it be about your praise resounding in this house, God. Even when we leave, Lord, we don't want to leave talking about one another. We want to leave talking about you. We want to leave rejoicing, oh, God, because you were in our midst. We want to leave praising, Lord, because we got to see got to see another facet of who you are. We want to leave, Lord. Oh, God, saying like they did on the road uh, to Emmaus, did our hearts not burn as you taught us the word of the Lord? So we pray for the Holy Spirit to be the teacher tonight. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be the guide tonight. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be our advocate, to be our standby, to be all that we need. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, flood this place. 
Holy Spirit, come in glory, come in power, come in splendor. We pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way here this evening. We want you to have your way, Lord. Have your way, holy God. Have your way, holy God. As your people offer worship unto you, as your people offer praise unto you, Oh, glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, oh God. Oh, praise you, oh God. Hallelujah. Saints, just begin to praise and worship the Lord. The God, our King. Come on. Individually, corporately, let's just bless him. We're going to take a few moments. Oh, God, we want this place, Lord, to just be so attractive to you. Oh, God, that it be uh, an opening for us, Lord, just to come before your throne and to kneel at your feet, Lord. Oh, God, and to bask in your presence, to be overwhelmed by who you are, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. We worship your name, Lord. Your word says that Oh, the Father is seeking such to worship him. You're looking for those that will worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, Lord, we pray even tonight, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask you to provide the fire, God, and we'll be the sacrifice. Yes, holy God, holy God, holy God, holy God. On the earth, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the heavens give you praise, Lord. Oh, God, let our minds be on you. We want you to have our attention. We want you to have our devotion, our affection tonight. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Whatever we left at home, God, whatever we left at the office, Lord, we put all of it in your hands. We cast every care on you because you care for us. God, I pray that burdens will be rolled away tonight. I pray that yokes will be destroyed by the power of your anointing. Father, we ask that this be a time of impartation, that the Spirit of God will impart truth, that the Spirit of God will impart insight. We pray for wisdom and understanding and knowledge, Lord. We pray for clarity, God. As your word goes forth, we pray, oh God, for the, for the power of the Holy Spirit. God, that you would give us a, a voice of utterance in this place this evening. Lord, that we would have the unction of the Most High as your word is spoken over us, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for the prophetic word in this place, for word of knowledge, for word of wisdom. In this house this evening, God, let your gifts be stirred up. Let your gifts be on display, Father, for faith, for miracles, for healing, Lord, for uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues. And Lord, we just pray for discerning of spirits in this house. In the name of Jesus, oh God, just stretch your hand out towards us, it's towards us, Lord. We come to minister to you. Yeah, God, we come to minister to you. As the old saints would say, we don't mind waiting, Lord. We don't mind waiting. Hallelujah. We, we set ourselves in a posture of expectation. We wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, God, and our hearts are encouraged. Yeah, God, our hearts are encouraged, even as we're waiting on you. Blessed be the name of our King, our Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, our God, you are so worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, holy God. Your name, your name, your name, oh, God. Your countenance, Lord, your character, Father. Your will, your will among us. Your will among us, oh, God. Father, we have so much to thank you for this evening. So much to thank you for, Lord. So much to thank you for. Oh, God, all the many blessings, Lord. We, we tried to count them. Yeah, we did. Uh, God, the way you blessed us, the way you moved, the way you provided, Lord. The things that you've done, God. The things that you prevented, yeah. The things you protected us from, God. The things that you restored, come on, that, that the years have taken away, that the locusts and the canker worm. Oh, God, try to eat up and destroy. God, we thank you for that right now. We thank you for refreshing and renewal, God. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. 
Thank you for the new thing that you're doing, God. Thank you for what you're birthing. Thank you for what, you, what you're bringing into fruition, God. We just say thank you for, the, for your word not returning to you void tonight. God, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you watch over your word because you hasten to perform it. And, God, we give you the glory for that. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. There, there's no impossibility with you, God. There's nothing too difficult, God. We thank you right now. Thank you for every good and every perfect gift. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that you're the same, that you don't change, Lord. We thank you right now, God, that in you there is no, no variableness. There's no shadow of turning. God, we thank you right now for your immutability. Oh, God, you don't change. You don't change. You don't change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we thank you right now. That's the reason we're not destroyed. That's the reason that we're not consumed, God. We thank you for your faithfulness tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, we do, God. You are faithful, Lord. And even if we are not faithful, you can't deny yourself. So we bless you for your faithfulness, God. You always come through. You always deliver, Lord. You always keep your word, God. And we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy tonight, God. Thank you for your compassion, hallelujah, for your joy, for your peace, for your long suffering. God, we thank you right now that you turn mourning into dancing, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You turn rivers into highways, Lord. We bless your glorious name. You turn graves into gardens, God. We give you the glory. We give you the glory, God, for your mighty power, for your mighty power, for your outstretched hand, God. We give it to you, Lord. We give it to you, holy God. Holy God. Holy God. Holy God. Holy God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord Jesus. Oh, bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. We bless your name on tonight, Lord God. We thank you for your spirit, Lord God. We thank you for your anointing, Lord God. We thank you for being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we give you honor in this place. We lift you high in this place. Lord God, we love you so much, oh God. You are worthy to be praised. We honor you on tonight, Lord God. You're so amazing, and you're so loving, Lord God. We honor you. Come on and just lift the name of Jesus up in this place. Lord, we give you honor on tonight. Lord, we give you glory on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord God. Thank you for being so wonderful to us, oh God. Thank you for keeping us, oh God. Thank you for blessing us, oh God. Thank you for loving on us, Lord God. Thank you for keeping our minds, Lord God. We just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you on today. Lord, we love you on tomorrow. Lord, we're going to love you forever as long as we shall live. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. We're going to sing how much, Lord, that we love you. Come on and clap your hands. Yay. I pray that you had an absolutely wonderful week. I pray that the Lord has shown you himself. And if he hasn't shown you that he opened up your eyes on tonight and that you are able to receive everything that he has for you, that you are able to receive his love, that the Lord opens your heart so that you may receive his love on tonight so that you can know how much he loves and cares for you. Hallelujah, Jesus, yeah. Oh.
than anything. More than anything. Come on and say, sing, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. I lift my hands and raise you. I lift my hands and raise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. More than anything. More than anything. Come on and say it again. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. I lift my hands and raise you. I lift my hands and raise you. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. More than anything. More than anything. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. We appreciate him, how much he has done so much for us, and we're not deserving of his love, we're not. But yet it's still he continues. Come on and sing for me. Sing, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. More than anything. Oh, 
Come on and sing that with me. We thank you. So more than anything. anything. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you more than anything. We love you more than the things that we really hold dear to our hearts, Lord God. That could be our mothers. That could be our fathers our husbands, our wives, our children. Lord God, we give all of that back to you, Lord God, because we can't love them more than you. So what better place to give them back to you, Lord God, to you that takes care of them better, that you can love on them better, you can encourage them more, you can bless them more. Nobody can do us like Jesus. Nobody can love us harder like Jesus. Nobody will take care better than Jesus, Lord. So I give everything that I hold dear to my heart, Lord God. I give it back to you. I give it all to you. I give it to you, Lord God, to show my love for you, Lord God, that I place nothing above you. Lord God, I place nothing above you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's how much we love you, Lord God, more than anything. Hallelujah. We want you to be on the top of our list. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and sing with me on this song right here. We already know it. Oh, sing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, we just sing it to the Lord. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More more than anything. Oh, come on and sing. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. No music. Let, let us let just be the voices of, so the Lord can hear us. Come on and shout it loud. Come on and sing. Oh, sing, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Sing it again, oh Lord, I love you. I love you. 
want you to think about what you hold dear to your heart. Sing, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. And you're telling the Lord that you love him more than that thing. I just want you to think about it. Whatever you hold dear, keep singing. Lord, Lord I love you. Take that moment. More than anything. And make that commitment to the Lord. Lord, I love you more than my jewelry, more than my child, more than my family, more, 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 more more than my home, more than the things that I hold dear, Lord. And worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we give oh, you glory. Lord, we give you Hallelujah. worship. Hallelujah. Honor and praise. Hallelujah. Oh God. Lord, we love you. We love you, oh God. Jesus. With all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, Lord, with all of our strength. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. And Father, the truth be told, we love you because you first loved us. And it's with an everlasting love, God, that you have drawn us to your side. Lord, right now in this moment and in this space of worship, we pray that heaven will speak to earth. Lord, that you will release your word into this, your people. God, we've been praying and we've been petitioning you and asking you to Say to us what it is that you want us to hear. And God, we're grateful tonight for the anointing that makes teaching and ministering your word easy. 
God, we're thankful for those that are present and those that are watching by live stream. Thank you, Father, for these wonderful singers tonight and, and those, oh God, who have uh, played for you on the instrument. Lord, I pray that, that our coming together tonight won't be in vain. That if nothing else happens, Lord, you get the glory. Let your name, Father, be exalted in this house. God, we pray that your kingdom come and your will be done in the midst of us. And Lord, I pray that if we found favor with you, that you will lay your hands on us individually. God, make us ready for what's coming. I pray, Lord, that whatever the needs are for every individual person, that your power will meet the need tonight. God, I pray that your grace will touch us in a way, Lord, that, that after you're done, all we can do is give you the glory. Lord, somebody needs to be healed and, and somebody needs to be encouraged and, and somebody needs to regain strength, Lord, and, and somebody has lost peace, but we know you to be a peace giver. And so, God, we're praying that you be who you are tonight. However your people need you, how, however marriages need you, however families need you, Lord, how, however men and women, however our sons and daughters, God, we want you to be who you are. So God, we thank you for these things, and we bless you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said amen, amen, amen. Somebody clap their hands and bless the name of Jehovah God. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, amen. Musicians, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Amen. Boy, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, those that are remaining, who remain standing. I just, man, mm, just think about what it would be like if we just, Let the Lord just have his way in worship. You know, every time we give him that, we give him that opportunity uh, to be the center of our affection and our attention. It has to make him smile. You know, worship is, is so uh, irresistible to the Lord. Uh, there's one woman whose daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. And she just proclaimed, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy. Uh, blind Bartimaeus did the same thing. They understood that, that, that worship, praise God, is something that the Lord loves. And the, 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 the fact of the matter is he doesn't need us to worship him because he's got a whole, whole heavenly choir. Amen. Uh, but yet he created us for worship. The Bible says that all his works will, will praise his name. Amen, somebody. 1 Kings chapter 17, amen, uh, verse 8 tonight. Uh, 1 Kings 17, verse 8, amen. I didn't change it on the slide, but don't nobody panic. Verse 8, uh, amen. 1 Kings 17, verse 8. Good to see you all tonight. want to welcome those that are watching by live stream and on YouTube. Those on Facebook, those that were watching the replay, we're grateful to have you here uh, with us tonight. And, and I pray that the Lord ministers to you uh, the same way I believe he's going to minister to us this evening. This is the second night of what we call the Word Seminar. Amen. And uh, God, God blessed us on last night. And uh, uh, just thank God for, for that, uh, what he did uh, on, on last night. You know, it's, it's important for us to express our gratitude to the Lord for the word, amen? amen. Uh, for us to not take the word for granted because everybody's not getting the word uh, as we shared on last night. Some people are getting all kinds of other things, but nevertheless, in, uh, in, in our text tonight, uh, I'll go ahead and read it. First Kings chapter 17, verse eight. The Bible says, then the word of the Lord uh, came to 
him to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, uh, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, Scripture says, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. How many know if God commands somebody to do something, amen, uh, they're obligated to do what he said. Verse 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there and said, a, a, a widow was there, I'm sorry, gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Uh, and as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, now you have to keep in mind, they're in the midst of a drought. And uh, water is scarce. Say amen, somebody. And, and, but, but she doesn't uh, balk at all at his request for water. And as she is going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar and see, I am gathering a couple of sticks, evidently to build a fire, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Somebody say first. first. And bring it to me, and afterward, Make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he meaning uh, her son and her household, or it could be Elijah, ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Say amen. amen. And so we know that our subtopic this evening is unprecedented times require uncommon faith. Unprecedented times require uncommon faith. Now, when we talk about the word seminar, we shared this with you on last night. Uh, we hold these word seminars to continue our commitment to the word of God as our standard rule and final authority for life and ministry. For us, it's the Bible and nothing else. Amen. amen. It's straight, no chaser. We just want the word. Say amen. We also desire to plumb the depths of God's word. How many know you have to go deeper? How many know that you have to take time to, uh, to get beyond the surface? And we're going to talk about that hopefully a little bit tonight if we have time. But we want to plumb God's word to understand better these five things. What are they? His purposes, his promises, his principles, his protocols, and his practices. Amen? God is consistent. Yeah, he's consistent. And, and we need to understand what those consistencies uh, 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 of God, what they actually are. Amen. And so uh, this particular word seminar, amen, uh, the purpose of this word seminar is to inspire in each of us uncommon faith for unprecedented times. We are headed even further into unprecedented times. And we need and uncommon faith. The faith that brought us here, the faith that sustained us, amen, I believe is still good. It still has value. It still has merit. But we're going to need more for what's coming. Say amen. Now, we also want to discover our role in seeing God's unlimited ability freely and fully functioning in our lives. Amen. Freely and fully functioning in our lives. So let's go to our text. Praise the Lord. Our text tonight, amen, again, we talked last night uh, from 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, verses 1 through 7. We're looking at 
these first 16 verses. And these illustrate God's ability and his and they support our conviction as a congregation that God can. How many believe that? That God can. You got enough proof. I can't say this enough. You got enough evidence that God can. Amen. Right. And so we looked at 1 Kings 17 verses 1 through 7 last night. And we saw how Elijah depended on God during a drought. I'm telling you, these 16 verses are filled with so much revelation, so much insight. I was going back through the first seven verses uh, today, earlier this morning, and I felt like, man, I, I need to come back tonight and preach verses one through seven all over again. Because there's so much there that I believe God wants us to see. But we're going to stick with verse 8 through 16. And what these verses reveal in 8 through 16 is how Elijah and a widow depended on God when neither of them had much. Amen? When neither of them had much. Y'all don't know anything about not having much, do y'all? Hallelujah. And so uh, this evening, praise the Lord, just a, a little quick review. We share with you from verses 1 through 7, and I uh, uh, avoided the temptation, overcame the temptation of adding to this. It would have been a whole, a whole different message tonight. But we share with you on last night that Elijah means Yahweh is my God. Uh, he, he goes, amen, based on this relationship that he has with the Lord where God is teaching him to depend on him. He was a man of prayer. He stood before God in prayer. We looked at James chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. God guided Elijah in the midst of the drought. He told him where to go. Amen. He, he told him, praise God, what to look for. He told him how he was going to be provided for. Uh, God taught Elijah about his providence. He taught him about his protection. How many thank God that he's a keeper? And that he protect you. Amen. Uh, he teaches Elijah of his provision. Now, I would dare say, you know those things about God. God has shown you, Elder Carr, that he is the God of providence. He's not the God of coincidence. He's not the God of accidents. But he's the God of divine providence. He's demonstrated to you, Sister Gwen, that he's a protector. Amen. And somebody else, you know him to be a provider. He also taught Elijah to trust him as the source and not in resources. Let's look at verse 7 real quick. It says, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now, somebody would have pushed the panic button, amen? But Elijah had been spending time with the Lord, and he didn't panic. Praise God. We're going to talk about what he did tonight, but he didn't lose his mind. He didn't start worrying. He didn't get anxious. Amen. But we'll see what he did in just a moment. So when we look at our text this evening in verses eight through nine, we see that God redirects Elijah. He had told him first to go to the brook and he said, I'm going to bless you there. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that God won't bless you everywhere, but he has a place called there that he'll bless you? Amen. Ha, hey, bless the, so, some folk can't get, the, get what God has for them because they're in the wrong place. That's a whole other message right there. But, but, but in verses 8 through 9, the scripture says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell, what does it say? There. Make this place your residence. Make this. Don't go there, amen, with uh, uh, the mentality that you're just going to be there for a short amount of time. But I want you to go with the mentality that you're going to dwell there. And then the Lord says, see, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So in verses 8 and 9, amen, this word comes to uh, Elijah from the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Amen. And this was as a result of the brook drying up. And when the brook dried up, God spoke to Elijah. 
Now, now put this in your notes. It's not on the screen. A lot of this is not going to be on the screen tonight. Y'all spoil anyway, since you have to use your ink pen. But the place of supernatural resources had ended, but God's word would provide direction and instruction for what was next. Amen. The, 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 the place of supernatural resources had come to an end, Brother Dave. But God's word would provide direction and instruction for what was next. See, many times, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, because things change, we feel like we need to start making some moves. and We need to start taking matters into our own hands. But that's a time, really, when you're somebody who's being led by the Spirit. You don't move. You wait until God gives you instruction and direction for what's next. Now, Lord, have mercy, you got to have the Holy Ghost to do that. Because our flesh wants to make things happen. Say amen, somebody. Elijah was a man of prayer, and he was accustomed, amen, to waiting on God before he moved. And we see no kind of reaction in the scripture on Elijah's part to change, to the change in provision. Some of us, if our resource, if our resources start to change, you can see a change in us. But you didn't see any kind of change in Elijah. There's nothing written. There, there is nothing noted. We see no reaction. But what Elijah did, he remained steadfastly devoted, amen, to his trustworthy source, which was Yahweh. The Lord instructs Elijah to go now, having made a, now listen to this. Elijah, in verse 1, he made a prepared prophetic proclamation. He told Ahab, man, listen. I don't care who your God is, this is my paraphrase, this is my translation, but he said it ain't going to rain. And I know you think your God is the God of rain, but my God is the God of everything. And it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. So he had a prepared prophetic proclamation. And he went from having made this prepared prophetic proclamation in verse 1, amen, to a, a prepared place of protection and provision in verses 2 through 7. See, God will, 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 will move you to a place that he's prepared for you, a place where he will protect you as long as you stay in the confines of where he positioned you. And it'll be a place not only of protection, it'll be a place also of provision. And he goes from this prepared place of protection and provision in verses 2 through 7, listen to this, to a prepared person of God's providence. Because this was a woman that God had already commanded to be in place to take care of his servant. See, sometimes you can't move till God get people in place to prepare for your arrival because he knows you're coming, and when you show up, he knows you're going to need some things. Hallelujah. That, we believe God can. Huh? Jesus said, uh, I think it's over in, in Luke chapter 4, verse 24, 25, 26 in there. He said, you know, because when Jesus, when Jesus stood up in the synagogue, Elder Cox, and told people that the spirit of the Lord was on, on him, and, and, he, and this was what he was supposed to do, and they looked at him and said, man, that's Joseph's son. That's Mary's boy. And he said, a prophet is without honor except, amen, is not without honor except within his own country. And then he, then he goes into this discourse about talking about this widow at Zarephath. He said there were all kind of widows at that time, amen, all across that area. But God has singled out one widow. Why didn't Elijah go to the rest of the widow? Because God had a prepared person. Say Amen. Sometimes those folk that you're trying to get to help you, they can't help you because they ain't the one that God ordained to help you. Amen. So look at verse 10. Verse 10, it says, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. In verse 10, Elijah obeyed God. Now, now, Rational thinking would have said, if she was a widow, she probably didn't have much. So why in the world are you going to send me, Lord, 
in a drought, in a famine, to somebody that don't have a husband. And in this, in this day, most widows were poor. And you're sending me to somebody who probably don't have enough for them, and you're saying they're going to take care of me. Exactly. And he obeyed God. Amen. See, sometimes God will send you to some people or to some places that don't look like they can help you with what it is that you need. But because God has commanded them to be there. Oh, my. It's, it's going to live in a moment. Because God has put them in place. Some folk have missed what God had for them because they looked at the person and sized them up and said, nah, can't, and, nah you, he, they can't help me. But you don't know who God might want to use. They might not look the part. Amen. So he, Elijah obeys God. He providentially meets the widow at the gate of the city. I mean, y'all got to see, God's hand is all on this. When he walks into the city, the woman happens to be at the gate. I don't know how many times in my life I've gone somewhere and it seemed like I got delayed at the house or delayed at the stoplight or something else happened. But it just so occurred that when I got to that point, the person I needed to see. So Elijah gets to the gate and the widow is at the gate and he doesn't waste any time. He calls out to her and he requests. Now, in, in, the, in the New King James Version, it says he asked for a cup. But in the Hebrew, it says he asked for a whole jug of water. Now, we're in a drought. I probably can bring you a cup. I probably can smell a cup. But, but this man had the audacity to ask this woman for a jug of water. Why? Because he believed God can. If God had prepared her, he was going to make a demand on her. I know some of y'all scared to ask. But God, but God is releasing irrational confidence. Oh, my God, my God, my God. He asked for a jug of water to drink, and he added to his request. We're in a drought. We're in a famine. No, don't bring me a cup. Bring me a jug. And while you're over there, make me a cake of bread. Oh, come on, y'all. He wasn't making his request based on what he perceived to be her ability. He was making his request on the word he got from God. Come on, say we believe God can. I mean, how many times have you made your request based upon your own ability or, or what you perceive to be somebody else's ability versus the word that God gave you? He said, bring me a morsel of bread in your, in your, in your hand, in your hand. Right? Look, look at verse, verse 11. That's what he said. And as he was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me. He has good manners. A morsel of bread in your hand. But look at verse 12. Now, now, now the thing you got to understand about Zarephath and Sidon, and just show you how God operates. Sidon was where Jezebel was from. So God says, I'm so very God not only am I going to send you into the enemy's city, I'm going to make a Gentile woman take care of you. We got a bad God. He won't scare the Jezebel. He's, look, I'm going to send you right into the city that, where they worship Baal because y'all got to keep this in mind. This really wasn't about Elijah. This was about God. This was about God showing everybody, Baal ain't God, Jehovah is God. So he said, I'm going to send you right into Jezebel's hometown. You know she has some cousins there that could got the word to the palace. 
this fella Elijah showed up, the same one that laid your husband Ahab out, is over here in the city, and his God is saying, now, but look at what she says, look at what she says. Somehow she has this, this recognition, and she says, as the Lord your God lives. Now, she doesn't claim him to be her God, but she knows who Elijah is rolling with. Oh, my God. See, even sinners, they might not believe in your God, but somehow they can know who it is you're rolling with. I mean, how many times they looked at you and said, I don't know what it is, but it's just something different about you. I, I can't put my finger on it, but, but, but you're not like the rest of us. So she says, as the Lord your God lives. Now, again, y'all got to go back to last night. Remember, the word was out that God was dead because Israel had, had moved away from God and was now worshiping Baal. And, and because of the pluralism that, that, that Jezebel had introduced, glory be to God, it, it was about worship Baal and not Jehovah. But God said, I'm getting ready to fix all of that. I'm getting ready to show y'all what Mother Boyle used to say. Ain't nobody God but God. Just give me a minute. I'm working on something. She says, as your God, the, the Lord your God lives, I don't have bread. I do have a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a, in a, in a jar or in a jug. Come on. And, and, and see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself that I may go in and well, prepare for myself and my son that we may eat it and that we may die. Amen? Now, she swears an oath by the Lord, the God that she doesn't even know. In other words, she was saying, uh, I swear to God and hope to die. Huh? And she's, she said, I'm telling the truth about this. I don't want you to think I'm lying about my capacity. I don't want you to think I'm lying about what I've got to work with. Y'all see this? And she was planning to have her last meal with her son before they both died. But look at verse 13. The Bible says, and Elijah said to her, do not fear. Fear will rob you of what God is trying to get to you. She had enough recognition to realize that this man was a follower of Jehovah God, of Yahweh, but not enough faith to believe that God could work a miracle in her life. So the man of God says to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all would have took up cursing right there. It's almost like he didn't even hear what she said. He said, look, I want you to go and do what you said you were going to do, but I need you, amen, to make me a cake before you do all of that that you said that you were going to do for yourself. I need you to take what you have and give it to God. Make me a cake first, bring it to me, and afterward, make some for yourself and your son. And then, look at what he does. He gives her divine assurance in verse 14. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. Now, you just swore by him. But this is what he says. The bin or the barrel of flour shall not be used up nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. We, knew it, it, we know it would be a total of seven years before the Lord made it rain again. I want y'all to smoke that a little bit. He says, look what he says. He says, so she went in verse 15, she obeyed him. She trusts and she obeyed. She went and did according to the word of Elijah. And the result was that she and he and her household, they ate for many days. And look at verse 16. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. And you, so, so God supernaturally sustains the widow and her household. Now, you got to see this. 
He didn't give her more than she needed. He gave her what she required to make it every day. It, the, the, the bend didn't run over Ray, but every morning when they went back, they had what they needed to get through another day. Give us this day our daily bread. Take no thought for tomorrow, for the, tomorrow, amen, will in essence take care of itself. The Father already knows what you have need of before you ask. Amen? So, what can we glean from this narrative to help us have uncommon faith in unprecedented times? Here, here, here's a few, a few vital uh, insights. I want to share these with you. Go back to verse 8. Y'all all right? The Bible says, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded the widow there to provide for you. The lessons that we learn, amen, tonight, they're going to come both from Elijah and from the widow. Elijah, amen, from him we learn to wait on a word and instruction from the Lord, especially when things change. That phrase, the word of the Lord came to him saying, is the most commonly used phrase from God to a prophet. And what it was, was a direct verbal message. Over 100 times you can find that particular phrase where God was speaking to prophets. And prophets, the Bible tells us, they stood in the counsel of the Lord. Amen? And the, and the Lord makes known to them what he's doing or, or what he's going to do before he does it. And prophets are pictured as having a personal friendship with God. Lydia, I got to thinking about that thing this morning. And Jesus said over in John chapter 15, verse 14, and 15, that I'm no longer going to call you servants. I'm going to call you friends. I'm going to go find me somewhere I can get me some amen. We're friends with God. And so that means he's going to let us know what he's going to do. Now, he's not going to give us every detail. But if we hang out with him in communion, Sister Stacy, and in fellowship with him, God will give us divine insight. He will let us know what's going on. He might not give us all the details to the change, but he'll let us know how it is he's going to sustain us in the midst of it. And until he gives us a new word, we just trust him to sustain us until he directs us otherwise. That takes God. That takes faith. Amen? And, 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 and uh, so... Mm. See, whenever God speaks, we got to change. For Elijah, it wasn't just about a change of geographical location. It was about a change that God was working in him. Say amen. So, so listen to this. Listen to this. The prophetic is designed to build us. It initiates a process of transformation in us. Every time God spoke to Elijah, that word was forcing Elijah to have to change. He was having to believe God in a whole different manner. He was having to believe God in an entirely different way. The voice of God, if you're taking notes, write this down. It's designed to change the structure of a human life. It's designed to change our desires, our motivations, our worldview, our personal preferences, and everything about us. The word of the Lord contains the power of transformation. You're going to want to watch this again on replay. But when the word comes, it changes you. If you receive it, you can't stay the same. Amen? See, proof, of you, proof that you receive the word is you get changed by it. And there's a whole lot of folk that are not receiving the word because there is no change. So we got to ask ourselves, and we need to ask the Lord, put this in your notes somewhere, how must I change with the word that you're giving me right now what is this word demanding 
of me in terms of me changing. Because if he sends his word, I can't stay the same. If his word gets lodged in my heart, I can't be who I was before I received it. Amen? And so I ask you tonight, how has the voice of God changed you? That's something you want to ponder before the Lord. And, and, and along with that, we must be committed to a process of development that the word of the Lord initiates and fosters in us. See, God was developing Elijah for the next levels in the Lord. The brook and the widow were precursors, if you will, to him having a showdown with the prophets of Baal. He wasn't ready to stand before 850 prophets by himself, Devin. So God had to work on him and develop him for that which was greater. That's what he's doing in us. That's why he keeps sending his word. That's why he keeps speaking to us. Now, now, now you have to understand that every time you receive a prophetic word, it's designed to reveal God's nature to us so that we can change and become more like him. You want to test for whether a word was uh, prophetic, if it was from God or not? If that word does not make you like Jesus, amen, if it doesn't form Christ in you, then it, you either didn't respond correctly or God wasn't talking. Look at, look at how Elijah responded to God's word. He walked into that city expecting to see that lady and told that lady, look, I, I hear all that you're saying. Just bring me a jug of water and, and some bread. You don't do that unless God's word has formed something in you. And change something about you. It's mighty quiet in this Episcopalian church tonight. <laughs> every time he speaks. Every time he gives us a dream. It must form Christ in us. This is the thing. The Lord reveals himself to us through his word. Every time he spoke to Elijah. He was revealing himself through the word. He is a provider. Amen. So he told him, I have commanded this woman to provide for you. Yeah. What's he said to you? He's trying to reveal himself to you. Can I tell you something? If you don't have uh, any knowledge or intimacy of God, it's because you've never got a word from God. I, I, jotted down this, I jotted down this thought. No word, no revelation of God, who he is, what he said, or what, what he can do. I can prove it to you by scripture. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. Why do you think the devil don't want you to get the word? You'll mess around and start believing God. And more importantly, you'll mess around and start becoming like Jesus. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7, look at what he says. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Why? Nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. He did not have a revelation from God, so he did not know the Lord. But then you look at verse 21. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So you don't want God to stop talking. You want God to keep speaking. Because every time he gives you a word, he's revealing more and more of himself. And the better you know him, the greater your confidence is. That's how you get to stand in front of 850 prophets by yourself talking trash. Huh? That's why he wasn't afraid. Come on. James said that he had light passions just like us. Do you all, you all realize that after he did all that and Jer uh, Jezebel put the word out she was going to get him on the schoolyard after, 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 after class was out today? I'm going to see you on the park. Uh, what did he do? He went and ran and hid in a cave. He suffered from depression. He had a great spiritual high and went right into a spiritual low. And started thinking, Lord, ain't nobody in this thing but me. Don't nobody care about Jesus and the kingdom but me. Ain't nobody living saved, Lord, but me. 
And that, so he was, he's just like a lot of us because we can have spiritual highs and spiritual lows as well. Amen? So we, we've got to trust God's word. You see this in verses 10 through 14, just like Elijah. We trust God's word and we stand bold in it even when others cannot see it because we believe God. We, do, we what? We believe God. Listen, at, the, at its core, the word of the Lord is based on ethics. It's based on principles. It's based on values and clear motivation. And we must be able to hear the word of the Lord and to discern the core of it to know what is ethical and what is not. The proclamation of the word of the Lord it is always surrounded by turbulence. That's why the devil don't want you to say it. And people who tend to proclaim it. When Jesus said that a prophet is without honor, not without honor except in his own country, he was saying what Psalm 69 and 80 said about prophets. I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's son, for zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. People will not want to hear what you got to say because they know you're being used as a mouthpiece for God. In verses 14 through 16, I'm almost done. It's from the widow. We learn that we must exhibit uncommon faith in unprecedented times. We must demonstrate, as I keep saying, irrational confidence in God. Thank God she didn't go and ask somebody, what do you think? This man came over my house and just told me, Y'all know it's a famine, and it's a drought. And that man told me, I thought, started to call him a joker, because y'all know some of y'all always said that, and said, not only give me some water, but make me a cake before I, before I make my baby a cake. Y'all mamas know y'all would have turned everything out. Him asking you to choose him over your baby. But she didn't consult with anybody. Huh? She exhibited this confidence, this irrational confidence in God. Now, I want you to think about this. It makes no sense. This, the God that we're talking about was not her God, but she believed him. We say he is our God, and we won't act like that. James said even the demons tremble. She's aware, amen, that this is Elijah God, Elijah's God, and something motivates her to trust the man of God. Now, here it is. She was under the command of the Lord. God can command sinners. He can command folk that don't know him to see about his sons and daughters. You try to figure out why, why she was motivated. You can't. God had commanded her. Right? It's just like when he commanded the sun to appear and the stars to show up and the moon and the water to only come. The ocean, you, he said, look, you can only come this far. Fish in the sea, birds in the air. When he commanded it, everything he said, Ray, I'm going to preach to you, it was so. he commanded her she had to trust him amen let, let me finish up let me finish up so 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 here's some additional thing press into your relationship with the Lord for the days that are coming for the times that are ahead press into your relationship with the Lord that's the thing that caused Elijah to continue to grow in God his testimony matter of fact James lifts him up as an example for prayer to the rest of us, that he kept right on praying. Y'all do remember that the reason that there was a drought was because Elijah prayed for the drought. It wasn't that God was saying, I'm going to send a drought. James said that Elijah prayed for the drought, and God answered his prayer. And when Elijah prayed for the rain, God answered his prayer and caused it to rain. But he was a person of like passion, just like us. So you won't think that, oh, you got to be a super saint 
to get God to hold up the rain. You got to get, be a super saint. Come on. To get God to make it rain again. No, you don't. But you got to have some irrational confidence. Press into your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Expect divine insight from God. I am convinced that for what's coming, God does not want us walking in darkness. Can I go to Ephesians chapter 5? Ephesians chapter 5. He wants us walking in revelation. He wants us to know what's coming, and he wants us to know what it is that we're supposed to do. The saints shouldn't be in the dark. In Ephesians chapter 5, just for the sake of time, in, in, in uh, verse 17, it says, Therefore do not be unwise. Why? Because the days are evil. We're living in evil days. When a man will pour gasoline on a woman in Winston-Salem and set her on fire, we're in evil days. His mama. But he says, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. God wants us to know what we need so that we know how to live. He says in Luke chapter 4, verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word live there is the word zao, and it means to, to, to enjoy real life, to have true life, life that is worthy of the name, active, blessed, endless life in the kingdom. That's how God wants us to live. And we can't live that way if we don't have the insight of God. That's why we got to expect it. Divine insight. Amen. Prepare to change. Prepare to change. Come on, say, Lord, I'm ready to change. Prepare to change. You've got to ask the Lord, how must I change? What must I do? Something greater is coming. God was making Elijah ready not just to deal with the Baals but, uh, or, the, or the prophets of Baal. Elijah was a part of this procession that was going to get rid of Baal worship in Israel altogether. It would be Elijah that would anoint Haziel and Jehu and, and, and replace himself with Elisha. And God said, whoever Haziel don't wipe out, Jehu's going to wipe out, and whoever he doesn't wipe out, Elijah's going to wipe out. And by the time they got through, Ahab and all his family were gone. Je it, what they said about Jezebel, that the dogs were going to eat, wasn't going to be anything down there to find. Because you have no idea what God is preparing you for. But you can abort it. He's trying to change us. He's trying to make us, make us like, like, like Jesus Christ. And then in this last point, I'm going to quit right here. BFC is the barrel. We are a barrel. Let me go back over here right quick. This is a good place to end. Look at what he says. He said that the bin of flour shall not be used up. That bin was a barrel. But she had to make the barrel available to the Lord. And the more she made her barrel available, the more God made sure there was something in the barrel for, us, for other folk to be able to get. And this church is a barrel. Come on in here, everybody. And, and the more we keep something, amen, uh, in terms of our making this church available to what God wants to do, to whom God wants to serve, God is going to make sure that everything that we have is here. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And the great thing about it, it ain't about none of us. It's about his will. And can I tell you something? There are going to be some households coming that God is going to make sure that you've got what you need because you have made this barrel available to everybody else. Come on, stand on your feet. I'm quitting. Hallelujah.
One of the challenges of the day that we have, Amos prophesied that there will be a famine for the hearing of the word of the Lord. We are inundated with voices, all kind of voices, all day long. And sometimes we don't appreciate the fact that we're in a faith fight. Because everything is vying for your faith. Sometimes we have more faith in the weatherman than we do in the God who creates or allows the weather. Sometimes we have more faith in the doctors than we do the God who has declared and shown himself to be a healer. Sometimes we have more faith and trust in ourselves instead of a, the God that made us. But my hope and my prayer, and Holy Spirit, I'm depending on you. My God, right now, Holy Spirit, I'm depending on you. Lord, don't let this word fall to the ground. We chant and we say things like it's already done, Lord, but it's not already done. Yeah, you've done your part in terms of releasing the word, Lord, but many times the prophetic is conditional. And sometimes we fail to appreciate that it requires certain relationships to be put in place. And then it also demands our obedience. We wish that your will was automatic, but we know that it's not. And sometimes because of our doubt and disbelief, sometimes because of our disobedience, Lord, we frustrate your word from coming to pass for our lives. God, we don't want to be religious and just say the things that, that we know somebody might be expecting us to say because we're Christian. No, we want to have bona fide faith in you. We want to believe you, Lord, before we really need to believe you. Before we require a miracle, we already want to know that you're a miracle-working God. So, Holy Spirit, you know this has been my prayer even before we came to these two nights, that the skepticism that exists in this house, that you would take it away. The disbelief, Father, and the doubt and the fear about changing, about having to make adjustments, or whatever the case may be, God, that you would dislodge it, uproot it, and cast it away from us all. God, we understand what happens when complacency sets in among a people and they stop really truly believing and demanding of you, asking and requiring of you. Lord, I pray that that's not the case in this house but Holy Spirit, we need you tonight. We need you tonight. And we know we're going to need you for what's coming. So while we're standing here, Lord, I pray that you would hear my prayer and impart the spirit of faith to these, your people. I ask for honesty in the room, God. Because many times we think we have things that we don't. Many times we proclaim, Lord, that we've already received when we haven't. We don't, we don't want our testimony to be like that man who said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. But God, I'm praying for mature faith in this house. I'm praying for perfect faith in this, among these, your people, Lord. We want to be like Jesus because he trusted you unequivocally. He believed you, God, without hesitation. He knew that you would do everything that you said. And he aligned his life accordingly. Lord, I pray that every area in us that needs to change, God, and you sent the word, but the word didn't find the good ground that it needed to produce the harvest, Lord, that you expected. But I'm praying that we will change. I'm praying that, that somehow, God, after the benediction, I, I don't know how we'll get it, but somehow after tonight, 
that every one of us, Lord, will go to that next place in you as it pertains to our faith. God, I, I'm not limiting this to for faith for things. And some might need things. But I'm talking about a faith in you that is so radical that even the world will look at it and say, it makes no sense the kind of confidence they have in their God. We want to be known not as the people who, who lift their hands and declare we believe God can. We want there to be proof, proof that corresponds with our declaration. We want even the world to, to look and see that this is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. So Father, I pray that for every hungry person, every person that, that came, every person that's watching, Lord, uh, they're desirous of this. God, I ask as your servant, as your son, that you will give it to them, that you will grant it to them. I pray when my brothers and sisters in Africa watch this video, God, uh, because of the honor that they bestow on your word, I pray, God, that you would grant it to them, that you will change East Africa, God, because of the hunger and the thirst that they have. I pray, God, when those in this city, that, that they're not members of this church, but, God, they watch our live streaming and they get our messages and, and they grab a hold of the things that are said from this pulpit. Lord, I pray that there's such a grace released upon them that they'll walk in this spirit of faith. Father, I'm just going to hang out right here just for a moment. I, I, I know we got to move on and we got to go in some people's mind, but Lord, there's some things that I put before you and I want to see them. I want to see them. I want to see your miracles. I want to see your signs. I want to see your wonders, Lord, but I also understand what your word says. There were places that Jesus just could not work in his power because of the unbelief, Father, and he went other places and worked. I don't want that to be this place. I want him to be able to work in this house. I want him to be able to work among this congregation in and through the lives of those who are here. So, Lord, while we're standing here tonight, I pray that you will send your word to us. Impart your word to us. Impart your spirit to us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would bless somebody real good. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. They don't keep coming Thursday after Thursday just because, God, it's Thursday and we're supposed to come. But they're coming because they want more from you. They come on Sunday, God, because they want more from you. They're not trying to find an excuse to stay home or to miss the gathering of the saints. But, God, they want more. They're not satisfied. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Let, 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 let's, 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 let's go for this. Let's go for this. Ask him for what you want. Ask him for what you desire. And I can tell you right now, if you don't need it, don't expect it. If it's just a good idea, he's not going to give it to you. But if you really, 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 really want God, Prove it. Show him. Show him. Show him. Lord, I pray that you put a holy desperation in this congregation of people. I pray, God, that every time we gather, that we're so unsatisfied with what we know of you, Lord, that we press into you like we never, like our lives are on the line. We don't want to be cold. We don't want to be casual. We don't want to be cute, God. We want to be relentless. 
I just pray for every heart that's no longer hungry. God, you put, put that hunger back. Restore that thirst. It's like you said earlier this week, Lord, awaken this congregation to you once again. Awaken people everywhere, God, that name the name of Jesus Christ. Stir us, God. Stir us. While you're shaking institutions, while you're shaking kingdoms and thrones, while you're shaking your church, Lord God, do a work in us. Do a work in us, oh God. Lord, we ask you all these things in your son Jesus' precious and holy name. Father, make us, make us who it is you want us to be. Move us from just being willing to wanting to, God. I'm praying you do it in me. Start it in me. Just have your way, God. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Amen. Elders coming. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord one more time tonight. Let's celebrate the God that can one more time tonight. Let's celebrate the one that's alive one more time on tonight. Let's celebrate the King of glory tonight. Our provider, our healer, our protector. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word tonight. We thank God for the last two nights for the Lord has saw fit to bring directly to us what we need right now for this hour. And our prayer is that we all receive what God has spoken to us. Amen? And that we will seek to walk his word out. And as the Lord continues to reveal himself through, to us through his word, amen, and we seek to need to go forth and to demonstrate it by our action and believe and trust in him. How many believe God? How many trust the Lord tonight? Amen. So there are so many things <laughs> that we, we could just glean from uh, uh, the word uh, the last two nights just been pouring and re-pouring and pouring out over and over again tonight. But even as we prepare our hearts uh, to give on tonight, and we can see as uh, the woman there obeyed what the Lord had spoken through the man of God and went forth in obedience to what he had said, she deliberately went forth and gave without question. Hallelujah. And as she poured out God kept pouring in. As she continued to pour out, God kept pouring in. As she continued to pour and to give, God kept providing as he said that he would. And all of us, this church, ministry, individuals, have words over our lives that as we seek for them to continue to come to pass, it all requires us to align and obey what the Lord has spoken just as this woman did and we saw. Amen. So tonight, as we seek to give, as the Lord might have spoken to your heart even before you came out tonight, possibly earlier this morning, um, about what offering, what giving, what manner of gift will you give on tonight? Not just your tithes. Some of them presented tithes unto the Lord tonight, but we're talking about an offering specifically tonight as the Lord has spoken to your heart. I'm going to ask tonight, ask the Lord, take a moment. What's the Lord been speaking to you um, about giving tonight and sowing tonight and really making a deposit and as a sign of confidence in what God has said and really trusting and believing him. Amen? As we see this woman did and as we can see that God, she trusted the word, believed and poured out. And we see that tonight. So, Tonight I ask, 
that you give and continue to give so by electronic means. Those that are joining us um, virtually tonight, um, you should see giving options there for you. We still encourage Givelify, PayPal, and all the electronic means. Continue to sow, continue to give. Um, by those, those in the sanctuary, if you absolutely need an envelope, the usher can accommodate you um, here, but we ask that you continue to sow uh, by electronic um, means on tonight. Amen? How many trust the Lord? Amen? Hallelujah. We trust him. We believe him and our actions do likewise in obedience. Amen? So, Father, we do bless you tonight and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us over the last two nights. Bless the man of God to pour out um, as we sought um, to hear your word with an attuned ear and we seek to go forth to mix the word with faith. And, Lord, we ask that you continue to reveal yourself to us more and more as we open our hearts up to you in faith, in obedience to which you have spoken to us. And Lord, search us ever the more. We want to be each and every day to seek to be conformed to your image and your likeness. But we thank you for the hearts that gave tonight. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We say amen, amen. Let's come with the announcements tonight. Let's celebrate the Lord as Lydia comes tonight. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Remember, uh Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we do have corporate prayer. That's tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. If you have not signed up for the outreach ministry, the event on Saturday, we do have a sign-up sheet in the front of the church. Please sign up. We do need volunteers for Saturday morning for the outreach event with Faith Fire. Amen. And join us back here on Sunday morning at 9.30 for corporate prayer followed by our morning worship at 10 a.m. Also, let's keep in mind that we do on September the 11th. Woohoo! September the 11th. We will yes, be we will. celebrating our ministry gifts. That morning at 10 a.m., we will have Dr. Chip uh, Harvey Rice here with us from Maranatha Fellowship. He will be our guest speaker that morning, that afternoon. Bishop Adrian Stark from World Victory will be with us, and you all govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. As we stand to our feet all over the sanctuary, please be mindful of all the announcements, and as we prepare for September the 11th, amen, it's been a high time of celebration, hallelujah, the gift that God has blessed us with in leadership here, so we all want to be out for the full entire day and be prepared to be a blessing, be prepared to sow, be prepared to give, be prepared to celebrate. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. And by way of this Saturday, please make sure you sign up physically here and go to the link as well. Amen? Go to the link that's in Group Me to sign up, and there's a whole um, s slots of times there where you can sign up. You can come early. You can come mid-part. You can come later on the cleanup crew. But we're asking because we want to make sure we get a proper accounting of those who are serving from Bethany. So I want to make sure. Please sign up in the front as well as go online to fill in. Amen? Any other announcements? Bless the name of the Lord. How many are excited about what's happening right now? Amen. So we thank God for that. Father, we do bless you and honor you tonight. We thank you, Lord you continue to speak to us. Lord, we thank you for uh, your word that you have spoken, and we seek to truly mix your word with faith. And Lord, we bless you and honor you, and uh, we just thank you tonight. So grateful um, that your love that's towards us, Father. Uh, we just seek to bless you in our lives and truly seek to be glory reflectors here on this earth, to go forth to do and to proclaim your gospel to the nations. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for an opportunity to serve, to sow, to give, and to be a blessing to others, Father. And we love you like never before. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We say amen and amen. Uplift the hands. We say it together. We believe God can. 